everybody. Um, just to let y'all know, this is Narlo Plays with His Hobbit. It has been a while since we've been back here in the Shire. Um, we were playing along there. We had just gotten through the tutorial, ended up in the Shire, and that's whenever I got sick with pneumonia and then all the stuff from work. So it's been quite a while, but we're back into the Shire here and we are going to see what kind of issue we can get up to. There we go. Good wave for everybody. Alrighty. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is zoom out a little bit. There we go. Um, I'm going to show you all a feature. The Spring Fest was going on whenever I was last playing. It was about God, six, seven weeks ago now. Um, it is no longer going on. It ended in late April, so we need to get rid of this particular um, quest so that it's no longer showing up on our quest log. And I'm going to move away so I can get you a clearer picture of the quest log. There you go. You see the invitation to the Spring Festival. You can click on it right here. It pulls it up in the quest log, and if you click Cancel, it will get rid of it. And will take care of it and take it off of your list. There you go. And that's just a little thing on cooldown timer. Some of the quests can be repeated um, in this game and it has a cooldown timer so you can't just spam the quest. You have to wait a while before you can do them again. And in this case we have to wait till next spring. Alright, and you can do that with any quest. If you get a quest that you feel you've outgrown or just tired of working on, um, just don't feel like doing it or you run up against the limit I think there's a 45 quest limit that you can hold in your log and you decide that you've just got too many quests and you need to get rid of one of them then uh, that's how you do it you can just click on the button over there and click cancel now I need to go back to I'm gonna pull up my inventory here I need to run back over to little delving where we started at because there's tokens of salutation and these tokens of salutation, you can hand them in in um, exchanged, I think, with that first person, the postman we talked to in Little Delving. So why don't we run over there? And when I get there, I will rejoin you. Here we are, we're coming back into Little Delving now, running past one of the Hungry Hobbits. And that's what I thought, the Postman. Here's the Postman, you'll notice he's got the little emblem over his head here. That right there is where you find barter NPCs, where you can barter in items. And in this case, our barter items are the five tokens of salutation. It says a gift given to those who aided against the spread of evil. The tokens can be exchanged here at Thorns Halls, Archit, or Selendim. So all these, the beginning areas have a person that you can barter them in for. So let's Is click on him. And he lets us exchange it for either lesser healing potions, lesser mana potions, or what they call a novice's mark. It's a pocket item which gives you plus five percent out of combat run speed. Only lasts for 10 seconds and it's got a 15 minute cooldown. So, uh, hmm, just taking a look at it here. We can get the potions. All right, I'm gonna get the pocket item. It costs three and then one of each potion. That seems to be a pretty decent way to do it. Alrighty. Get the healing potion. And let's get the power potion. And as you see, things gray out over here when you can no longer choose them. And that takes care of all five of our marks. You see, we've gotten another healing, another power. And this is our pocket item, which is the novice mark. And we will go ahead and throw it in our character. You see it appeared over here, and we have our first pocket item now. Alright, so that's everything we need to do over here at Little Delving. And we can head back over to Michael Delving. 
and start on some of the quests over there and once I get there I will once again rejoin you all right as we're running along here and running into light posts you see that my pocket item has pretty much recharged now so we're gonna give it a little test shall we and just see what it does okay let's back on up one of the first things that we need to do let's drop that items like this any kind of item like that um, really works best if you put it down here on your bar and I do need to bring that back up alrighty we're gonna drop it down on our bar here so now we can use it without having to go into the character screen of the inventory so we're gonna run along and I'm gonna click the novice mark and you'll notice I've got a boost to my running speed up here <laughs> actually I've already got the fleet footed skill because of the uh, because of the cape that I'm wearing so uh, it didn't add anything because those running speed bonuses do not stack just the one that's the higher um, ability takes precedent so the other thing you'll notice when I was looking at my inventory I've still got stuff from Archit that I need to uh, sell back to the store so why don't we take a quick trip over here the nearest merchants are in this inn this is the bird and baby inn and for a little bit of token trivia um, when Tolkien was a member of the Inklings along with uh, his friends at Oxford um, oh lord I'm drawing a quick blank is it T.S. Lewis? C.S. Lewis C.S. Lewis. Lewis is that right? the one that wrote the line the Narnia Lying Witch in the Wardrobe I believe that's correct um, anyway when they were a member of a group of writers their little club called the Inklings they would often go to the Eagle and Child Tavern so this right here is a little a little tribute to them the Burden Baby Inn and we'll go in and in a further tribute to the Inklings if you go into the back you'll see a group of hobbits here that are named have very similar names to um, members of the Inklings. I don't remember the only two that I know are Lewis and Tolkien, but they all have very similar names to three of the other members of the Inklings. So here they are back here discussing books and writing and once again a nice little tribute to uh, Tolkien and uh, the the background of uh, where this game comes from and the stories so let's talk to the healer I'm to be of service. we're gonna go to sell and we're gonna get rid of the goo now all these things can be turned in for tasks um, you get tasks at certain levels that will give you expanded uh, work on deeds and that sort of thing but in this case I'm just gonna turn them in for money right now that's the other choice of what you can do with them so we'll choose that and we'll sell it we'll get rid of the mangled swords the broken short swords and the quilted leggings you see we've got the th cloth leggings that are better so we'll get rid of those as well and finally the carapaces that came off of the insects there we go much better we're getting a little stash of bank here on us so back out and let's go talk ah a feature if you come right over here you'll see there's a barber if you talk to the barber if you don't like your appearance don't like your face your hair your beard your whatever here's how you change that you talk to the barber how do you, do? you spend some coin and they allow you to completely redo your appearance I'm happy with mine right now so I'm not going to take advantage of that over here you have the hobby master that's one of the other people we can talk to while we're here the only hobby available in the game right now is fishing and it says have you ever always wanted to relax by stream or pond cast your line into the sparkling waters and catch a fish 
and it says he allows you to train the fishing hobby. So we will go ahead and train that and we've gotten our first and actually only hobby at the moment. Let me see. Titles. Where's our skills? There we go. So we just got the skill of... It should be fishing. Passive. I would have swore it come up here. I will have to take a look. And I'll be right back to tell you where that skill is. Alright, I'm sorry I'm back. You come down here on your menu, you click here, you go to character, and over here you have your hobbies. It's not included in the other skills because the other skills are combat skills. And you see we have fishing. And I'm going to throw it right over here. This right here is the bar that there's 200 um, basically levels of experience you can build up in fishing. And right now we're starting at one. With hobbies, you are able to build up a certain amount per day. Most of the deeds like this, you are able to work on them only a certain amount per day before you max it out. We should also have gotten, and we did, a fishing pole and a basic guide to fishing. So that was a productive... Oops, he's still got a ring over his head. Let's see what he has to say. One fish, two fish. Hello there, Narlo. How do you do this fine day? I'm in an awful spot of trouble. Perhaps you can assist me. My sister, Misty Bolger, is the muscle of the family while I'm the brains. She goes out and fishes every day. I keep track of the sails and teach the young fishermen. It seems like last night my notes were used as a napkin for simply delectable fish medley. The notes had the totals and sales of our fish for the last week. Go find my sister in Bywater and ask her if she recalls the number of fish. So that'll be a nice easy quest to do. Yet another FedEx quest. But, you know, how many quests in these games aren't FedEx quests? Alright. And dawn is approaching. We're going to run back over here to Michael Delving. Let's see. In fact... We're going to hit this milestone here. I think I mentioned before the milestones are how you bind yourself to places. And we are going to bind ourselves right here. And there we go. This is now our home location. Anytime we use the map skill, we will come back to Michael Delving in the heart of the Shire. I'm going to take a quick break, go have a little breakfast, and I will be back in a little while, and we will continue on in our adventures in the Shire. Thank you for watching.